Team Shadow Craters, and we want to send our robot to the moon! U.S. and Russian robots and manned spacecraft reached the moon in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. In the last 20 years, probes from Japan, Europe, China, and India have also succeeded, and their artifacts are now on the moon. Now, it's our turn. Only 45 more to go, huh, Zah? Yeah. <laughs> During this experience, one of the things that I really learned about was the challenges that people would face when going to the moon. We were used to the flat FLO and FTC fields, but this one was very different with many ridges. These made us have to prototype our robot around it through much trial and error. However, this made me think. People who are actually going to the moon don't have these advantages. They have to build something that they know will work once it gets there. During this moon watch challenge, one of the biggest difficulties was getting over the ridge. We tried using rocket bogies like the Mars rover, treads, and big wheels. But the big wheels didn't have enough traction to get over the plastic ridge. Fail! So we focused more on treads and rocket bogies. Another task we had to plan for was being able to pick up the element loops on the field. We came up with a claw where it would grab the base of one of the element loops and throw it over into a basket, or a two-prong arm which would be able to get two element loops at one time, and then the last one we came up with was a sort of bin or dustpan to be able to scoop them up and have sort of an arm guiding it in. We found that the weight of the robot was important because if it was too heavy then it wouldn't be able to go over the ridge. And we also had to have a center of gravity in the right place, otherwise it would get stuck. Another thing we found was that that if our arm got too heavy with collecting with all the loops that we were collecting, then we couldn't lift it, so we had to gear it. So one engineering approach that we decided to use in our robot was the idea of modular design. Now in hardware, that looks like our robot has been built with one chassis and each arm or each um, drivetrain or each sensor just attaches to that. In software, um, it looks like our journey has been split up into five different areas and each area has a starting point and ending point. So what happens in between, whether it completes the task or not, it'll always get to that end point and so that the next part starts from where that one ends and so it just makes one big circuit. For our front we always use Lego x -Pod cases as balloon tires. And for our back power, we used, we used treads for the increased stability and traction. For navigation and feedback around the field, we used an ultrasonic sensor, compass sensor, and a touch sensor. And then as our arm apparatus, we used a quadrant. Not a trident, a quadrant, because it has four times. And then we geared it up for the increased torque. We have had robotic missions to the moon and Mars, and manned missions to the moon. But which is the way of the future? Even people on our own team have different opinions about this. I think we should go with unmanned because of the lives it will save. Now every problem that we solve, every tool that we make, every obstacle we encounter, those are things that we won't have to deal with as humans, that these robots can be programmed to deal with and they, that they will deal with. That means lives saved because we won't make those mistakes again. A human actually being on the surface, they use their own judgment to figure which path they want to choose, what decisions they want to make to be able to get the best out of being on that surface. A robot can only do what it's been programmed to do and send back photos. We need that human experience and that human feel if we want to really find another home for us if something happens to Earth. So who will be the next going to space? Will it be the government or private corporations? The government has several benefits including funding which they may be willing to extend for five or even ten years. However, the government is cutting funding to its space programs because of the bad economy and other programs competing for the same funding. They are trying to get the biggest bang for the buck, so they are using other corporations to do things they know can be done. The XPRIZE Foundation is taking a different track. They are using a cash price incentive to try and get companies to develop new innovations in areas where the needs are not met. In this Moonbots Challenge, we've learned a lot about robot design and also about reaching for the moon. We're all looking forward to more robot competitions and hearing more about space exploration. Once again, this is Team Shadow Craters, signing off.